Good morning. Welcome to Victorious Faith. I'm Cherry Campbell. We are studying the subject, the law of the creative power of words. And yesterday we talked about how we should keep a guard over our mouths and that our words should be few. For example, in Proverbs 17, 27, a man of knowledge re- uses words with restraint, with restraint. And Proverbs eleven twelve, a man of understanding holds his tongue. And uh, in Psalms, they, uh, the psalmist wrote Psalm 35, 28. Actually, let me look at Psalm 17, 3. I have resolved that my mouth will not sin. My mouth will not sin. And Psalm 141, 3 said a guard over my mouth. O Lord, keep watch over the door of my lips. And then in Ecclesiastes 5, 2, do not be quick with your mouth. Do not be hasty in your heart to utter anything. And in Ecclesiastes 5, 6, do not let your mouth lead you into sin. And then James 1, 19, be quick to listen, slow to speak. And so we were looking at these scriptures yesterday about how we should guard our mouth, keep a muzzle over our mouth, as it says also in another scripture that we read keeping a muzzle on our mouth, keeping a guard over our mouth, keeping a watch over the door of our lips, that we should speak few words and speak words that are righteous and just. We also talked about speaking words of praise and we read several scriptures. His praise is on in my mouth. I will tell of your righteous acts all day long with my mouth. I will greatly extol the Lord. And so what should be in our mouth, the praises of God should be in our mouth. Righteousness and justice should be in our mouth. And yet we should be very slow to speak and not hasty to speak. And so today I want us to go on and Again, let me give you three reasons why our words are important. One, words reveal what is in your heart. Words reveal what is in your heart. As we also read in Matthew twelve thirty four, for out of the abundance of the heart, The mouth speaks for out or out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. So your mouth reveals what is in your heart and then go down to verse 36, Matthew 12, 36 and 37. But I tell you that men will have to give account on the day of judgment for every careless word they have spoken. You will give account on the day of judgment. For your words. Verse 37. For by your words you will be justified. And by your words. You will be condemned. Why are words important? Out of the abundance of your heart. Your mouth speaks. Your mouth reveals your heart. And by your words you will be judged. And number two. As we have said. Words are containers. They release. The spiritual forces that are in your heart. The forces are faith or fear, doubt. Those are forces. Love and hate are forces. And so your words are carriers and containers that they carry those forces. Your words will carry your faith or your words will carry fear or doubt and unbelief. Your words will carry love or your words will carry hate and your words will be, will be the carriers and the transmitters and the deliverers of those spiritual forces from your heart to the target that you are speaking at, whether it is a situation or a thing or even a person and those words will have effect. 
they will carry and bring effect either for good or for bad. So your words release the spiritual forces in your heart. And I want to just share another scripture, a few scriptures on that line. That words release what is in your heart. In Romans chapter 10, verses 6 through 13. Now what we're talking about, what I want to focus on, words release your faith. We did a series on the law of faith. And faith has to be released. So let's back up here and look at faith for a little bit. Faith, it is a spiritual force. It is a creative force. Faith creates things. Faith changes things. Faith moves things. Faith can bring down walls. Faith can open doors. Faith can bring to pass what you are believing for. And so faith is a force. It creates, it changes, it moves things. However, you can have faith in your heart, but still have no effect in your life in your situation from your faith. You can have faith in your heart, but have no effect of that faith produced in your situation, in your body, in your finances. Why? Because faith in your heart is dynamic power that is Contained. It is like dynamite. If you, faith is like dynamite. Faith, dynamite can produce change, can blast rocks and mountains, blast through doors and buildings. Dynamite is a very powerful force. But if you leave that dynamite in a box in the closet, And you never ignite it. It will not produce any change. There is no power released. It is a contained power. But it is not released power. That dynamite can sit in a box in a storage room for years and do absolutely nothing at all. But if you take that dynamite out of the box and then you light a match to the fuse, then you are doing what it takes to release the power. The power will be explosive and will produce change. It is the same way with faith in your heart. There are Christians, many Christians, who believe in God. And they believe that God heals. And they believe that God can meet your needs. But that faith is contained lying in their heart. And it is not released until it is spoken. Let me say that again. Your faith in your heart is an explosive force, dynamic power, creative power. But as long as you hold it contained in your heart, it is dormant. It is inactivated. You have to pull it out and release it. Light the fuse. For it to release that force, to release the creative power. And it is by speaking 
your words out of the abundance of faith in your heart that you release that dynamic explosive power force that is in your heart. You release it into the situation that you need and want changed. Your words are the carriers of that explosive, dynamic, creative power from your heart to the situation. And so if you are holding faith in your heart and just saying and thinking in your heart, I believe in God. I believe God is my healer. God provides and meets my needs, but you're only keeping it in your heart and you never say it and you never speak and release it. Then it is dormant contained power waiting to be released, but it will not carry out its effect until it is spoken. Let me read some scriptures to you about that. In second Corinthians Chapter four, verse 13. This is a great scripture to illustrate, to, to express this thought. Second Corinthians four, 13 says, it is written, I believed, therefore I have spoken with the same spirit of faith. We also believe and Therefore, speak. If you believe, then you should therefore speak. Let me say that again. Read it again. Second Corinthians 4.13. It is written, I believed, therefore I have spoken. With that same spirit of faith, we also believe and therefore speak. Let's look at Romans chapter 10, Romans 10. Now you will probably be familiar with verse nine. If you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart. God raised him from the dead. You'll be saved. Let's back up to verse six, Romans 10, six. Now we're talking about faith has to be released. Verse six, but the righteous, the righteousness that is by faith says the righteousness that is by faith says now he is giving here um, the teaching on righteousness and salvation, but the principle is the same for anything and everything that you believe God for anything that is by faith. It operates the same way. That's why it's the law of faith. It's consistent. Whether you're using your faith for salvation or you are using your faith for healing in your body or you are using your faith for your finances. It is the law of faith, just like the law of electricity works the same way. Whether you are using electricity to turn on a light bulb or you are using electricity to operate the toaster oven or you are using electricity to operate the hair dryer. It is the same law of electricity that works the same way to turn on your hair dryer, turn on the light, turn on the toaster oven. Or the microwave oven. It's the same law of electricity. In the, in, and likewise, the law of faith works the same. Whether you are believing for salvation and righteousness, or you're believing for healing in your body, or you're believing for your marriage, or you're believing for your finances. Faith works the same in every situation. That's why it's a law. It's a spiritual law. It is consistent. It is always the same. And if you miss that series, it's on my website in the radio broadcast archives. I taught for eight weeks about the law of faith and you would benefit and be encouraged and build your faith. If you would go back and listen to that, because it teaches about how the law of faith works. It is a spiritual law. It is consistent. It always works the same way so that if you work it correctly, It can always produce results. 
But people are not understanding these spiritual laws so that they think it's happenstance. It is chance that sometimes you get healed and sometimes you don't get healed. Sometimes you get your need met and sometimes you don't get your need met. Actually, I call it a faith accident because people don't know what they're doing. And sometimes they actually do tap in to those spiritual laws and work them and they get results. And then the next time, though, they can't repeat it because they don't know and understand how those spiritual laws work. That's why we teach them and you can understand how they work so that you can use them the same way for all of your needs and get results every time. Every time. And so faith is a spiritual law. We read that in Romans 5 when we did the study, the law of faith. So faith is a spiritual law. It operates the same way, no matter whether you are believing for salvation and righteousness, healing, finances. So when we are looking here in Romans 10, verse 6, he is talking about receiving righteousness and receiving salvation, but it's the same principle how faith works, that you will use that principle to receive anything else that you need. Healing and finances and marriage situations, job situations, etc. So the verse 6 says, but the righteousness that is by faith says, says. What does faith do? It says. So Healing that is by faith says supernatural debt cancellation that is by faith says provision for your needs being met by faith says getting a job promotion by faith says whatever is By faith, it says, whatever is by faith, it says. So the righteousness that is by faith says, healing that is by faith says. Notice, if it's by faith, then it says something. And then what does it say? Do not say in your heart, Who will ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down. Now, remember, I briefly talked to you before. The word Christ means the anointed one and his anointing. Sometimes it refers to the anointing, which is the power of God to destroy yokes, remove burdens, set the captive free. That sometimes the word Christ is referring to the man, Christ Jesus, especially if it says Christ Jesus. Then it's talking about the man. But if it just says Christ alone, then if Christ is mentioned alone, it is sometimes referring to the power of Christ, the anointing that sets the captive free. And so if you look at it like that, do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down, bring the anointing down. Who will bring the anointing into my life? Verse 7, or who will descend into the deep? That is to bring Christ up from the dead, the anointing up from the dead or from the deep. Who will go to the mountains? Who will go to the desert? Where will I get the anointing that I need in my life? Where can I get the anointing that I need in my life today? Verse 8, but what does it say? What does it what? Say. What does it say? The word, what? The word. What is it? The word is where? Near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith we are proclaiming. 
So if you understand Christ being the anointing, the power that sets the captives free, and if you need power in your life today, if you need power in your body to heal your body, if you need a miracle in your finances, if you need a miracle in your family relationships in your children and their situation or in your job, what should you do? Say, where is the anointing? Where are you going to get the anointing? Where is the power that you need in your life? Where is the power? You know, a lot of Christians are going around looking for someone with the power. They, there are Christians who will go from convention to convention, crusade to crusade, looking for power that they need in their life. And of course, there's nothing wrong with going to conventions and crusades. We all should go. It builds our faith. But you don't need to depend on that. Where Who will ascend into heaven? That is to bring the anointing down. You might say, who will come to Colorado to bring the healing anointing? You don't need to look anywhere to find the power that you need to set your life free from whatever it is you need freedom from or to bring into your life the anointing to produce whatever you need in your life. You don't need to say, where is it going to come from here or there? No, it is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. The anointing that you need, the power you need is in the faith that is in your heart, but is probably dormant, inactive, contained faith. So what do you do to get that faith power released into your situation? You must say it. You must say it. Verse 8, what does it say? What does it say? The word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith we are proclaiming. Now that word of faith is the word of faith that will bring Christ, the anointing of God, yoke destroying, burden removing power to set the captive free into your life. Where is it? It's in your heart and in your mouth that you simply need to speak it. Speak it into your situation. And this produces the greatest miracle of all verse nine, that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You know, I believe the greatest miracle of all is new birth salvation. It is the recreation of your spirit being created to be in the image and likeness of God. Restored unto God. That salvation is the greatest miracle. And how does it take place? Not only believing in your heart. You know, there are people who believe in God. They even believe in Jesus. But they're not saved. Because they never said with their mouth, Jesus is Lord. Salvation comes by not only believing in God, but also saying, confessing with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. And you could say, Jesus is my Lord. There are people who have even gone to church and you ask them, are you a Christian? Well, I believe in God. I believe in Jesus. Yeah. But they have never confessed Jesus is Lord. So they haven't been born again. Until they confess with their mouth, Jesus is Lord. Why? Verse 10 explains it. If you don't believe me, this is the Bible. 
This is scripture. Argue with God. Verse 10 says, For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. It's with your mouth that you confess and are saved. You could say it is with your mouth that you confess and are healed. It is with your mouth that you are, that you confess and get your needs met. It is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. Verse 11. As the scripture says, anyone who trusts in him will never be put to shame. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. Verse 13. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Calling is speaking. You could also say confessing the name of the Lord shall be saved. So you see that there is two parts. There is faith that is in your heart, but it is contained. It is dormant and inactive until it is spoken, spoken, speaking your faith is what releases and activates the power in your situations so that it can create so that it can produce miracles in your life. So today I encourage you, believe God and speak with your mouth the things that God has said over your life. Be a speaker of God's word. Now, join me again tomorrow. And remember, God loves you. You're blessed and highly favored by the Lord.